What's up guys? Professor Paul here with another VFX tutorial. Today we're working in Nuke and we are looking at the Reconcile 3D node, which is kind of a specialized node but has, um, has some really uh, useful applications. Uh, I use it quite often. So um, we're going to dive into it. This was a, a tutorial that was requested uh, by a couple of viewers. Because uh, if you were looking closely at my 3D paint out tutorial where I painted out the lamp uh, reflection in the back of the truck, you saw that I used Reconcile 3D a couple of times in that script, and I didn't really mention it uh, in that tutorial. So we'll, we'll talk about how it works and uh, what its uses are with a slightly different shot, but, uh, but similar principles. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so this is a... Uh, a shot for uh, for film I worked on uh, a few months ago, and the job was to swap out this saloon sign and also paint out some stuff on the building. And this would be the kind of thing where it's you know really easy to to do a 3D camera track. And I've got a decent track here and a, a solve with a camera and all of that sort of stuff. And we can just see, you know, here's our point cloud, works really well, everything sticks nicely, and I can put in a, a simple 3D card for the sign, and I've just stuck a checkerboard on there for today, uh, so you can see it, but basically I've just got a little card here, and open that up, right, let me put the point cloud back on, so you can kind of see how it all, line, all lines up. You know, here's the front of the saloon, there's the sign, etc. There's the camera, and um, and it all works great. So how would I use Reconcile 3D in a situation like this? Well, I might use it a couple of different ways. One uh, would be, let's say, since I'm changing the name of the, the saloon and it's no longer La Canasta or whatever it was originally, these little LCs on the horses, uh, the horse and the cow might need to get painted out. Well, I mean, I could just drop a 2D track and track those and, you know, do my roto paints. But I, I've i already tracked. I already have really good, useful track data for the entire shot. So why would I start from scratch with more tracks when I could just simply do uh, something like this, view through my camera tracker, find one of my track points that is on or close to the thing I need to paint out, select that, right click, choose create axis, right? So now I have an axis that sits there. And if I view through my camera uh, and select the axis, you can see I now have this little 3D axis that is going to stick exactly to that thing. Okay, cool. Now what I need to do is turn that into 2D coordinates. And that's where Reconcile 3D comes in. I can't just use the translate uh, data from that axis, you can see like as I scrub through, it never changes, right? Because it is a fixed point in 3D space. So the way Reconcile works is I drop this Reconcile 3D node and I will attach the axis to the axis input, the camera, the solved camera to the camera input. And I don't find that I have to do this, but it doesn't hurt to connect your plate to your image input. So now with the Reconcile 3D node, I can tell it to create keyframes based on the position of that axis. Now you can turn on calculate live output, which will, you'll see, it'll put the output point right there. I don't generally leave calculate live output on or calculate calculate output live. I usually don't keep that on because it, it just generates a little more overhead for that node uh, and slows your system down. But you can do it, let's say I was putting a lens flare, which will be another another option I'll show you in a minute. Um, let's say I was positioning a lens flare and I wasn't quite sold on where I had the, um, the axis. I might do a calculate output live and adjust the axis until I get it where I want it. But usually the way I do this is just hit create keyframes and let it create keyframes for the entire range. And you see it processes really quickly. And now what I have is a 2D out point, output point that moves across the frame and sticks to that thing. I can now use that for any 2D transform 
node of any kind, right? So my example being, I wanted to um, stick a roto paint on here. So we'll drop a roto paint in and select the root, select the transform. And what I'm going to do is just control drag from the animation menu to this animation menu. Now I have this animation happening on here. And all I have to do now is jump in here with my roto paint tool. I'm going to back up some because this enters the frame from the left side. I'm going to paint right here where it just starts. Set this to all and I'll just do a quick and dirty paint out. This is probably not how I would do this in reality. Um, I'd probably do a a single frame held paint uh, and track that in, but you get the idea, right? So now I've done this and now this roto paint is going to follow that axis perfectly. I might make a little quick adjustment here. It's right there. And if you want to see it, we can see the paint strokes just by selecting the root and selecting the arrow tool. And you can see those paint strokes are now moving with the horse's ass <laughs> and, uh, and are sticking to it. And I didn't have to create another track. I could do the same thing for the, the cow's butt over here. And, and that would be good. So that's one way to use Reconcile 3D. Another way to use it, obviously, would be if I need to do some roto, um, you know, let's say in order to integrate the sign replacement up here, I need to do some roto. I could potentially use the uh, a Reconcile up here to drive a roto node, etc. Here's another way that I've used it pretty commonly, and that is when we're dealing with motion blur, okay? So this thing is moving and there is a little bit of motion blur on it. You can see in the plate, there's some motion blur due to the camera move. So I want to motion blur whatever item I'm, I'm comping in here with my 3D track. I have a couple of different ways I can do that. One would be to go to my scanline renderer and turn up the number of samples. And you'll see, you know, multi-sample adds that motion blur to it. Um, the problem is I might have to go really high on my samples if the camera is moving very quickly and I might not know how many samples I really need to make that look good. So that's not always the best option. Another way to do it would be to put on a motion blur 3D node, uh, which can be pretty intense and I can connect the camera to it, right? Connect the camera and then I need to follow that with a vector blur and use the vector blur information, the motion UV channels and set my motion amount and I'll turn it way up so you can see it. Yeah, see it's see it's working. Okay. But motion blur 3D for this particular application is completely overkill, right? For it to be tracking um, you know, uh, in three dimensions for the motion blur is kind of unnecessary for a shot like this. So uh, a way that I've done it before where I, I want to just process things quickly is use a motion blur 2D node. And to do that, I'm going to add another axis. I can plug it in or not. Usually a good idea to plug it in. And I'm going to put it right where the card is. So I'm going to open my card and I'm just going to click and drag from the animation menu on translate to the same position on the axis. So now the axis is sitting uh, dead on where that camera is or where that card is, right? It's exactly where the card is. So now I can use that as the axis for another reconcile. Again, plug in the camera. plug in the image, plug in the axis, and create keyframes, and go. And now I have a 2D transform for what that replacement sign is doing uh, as it moves across frame. And so I can now use that with a motion blur 2D. 
and I can plug in the 2D transform to the reconcile. Add a vector blur after that. Set that to motion. And again, now you can see I've got a very fast processing motion blur that is accurate to what that object is doing as it crosses the frame. Uh, and it all is derived from the camera track. All right, one more thing that we can do. I'm going to just kill this. One more thing I can do is, let's say I want this to become a lens flare, right? I did, the client says, hey, let's punch up that light right there. So once again, let's go back to our camera track. And there's a spot right there. We'll go ahead and create an axis right there. And my script is getting stupidly messy. So I'm just going to disconnect all this stuff and hide my expression arrows. And that was Alt E to do that. All right, so now with this axis, we'll go reconcile, camera, axis, image, create keyframes. All right, so now I've got my XY output right there. I can add a lens flare, or if you have a, uh, a flare that you like, um, a flare plugin. I, I, I generally use um, Lens Engine, uh, which can be found for free on uh, Nukepedia, but you know you could use this with whatever. Uh, so what I need to do is uh, I need to get this position of the flare to match up to that output. And you can see, hey, that actually works really well. So if I uh, alt or uh, sorry, control drag from the XY output of my reconcile to the position of my flare. Now that flare is going to move with the camera and go to my presets and turn this into a glow ball. Turn all that off. All right, so now I've got my little lens flare there that's gonna stick to my camera track um, without me having to do an additional 2D track or anything, and that's using Reconcile 3D. So there you have it, Reconcile 3D. It's a, a really versatile node. Uh, it has you know, essentially that one specific function of turning 3D coordinates into 2D coordinates, but you can use it for a variety of things. Uh, anytime you need to add any sort of 2D nodes to a 3D scene, um, anything that's got a 2D transform on it can be uh, expression chained to a reconcile 3D node. So there you have it. That's pretty much it for this week. Apologies for this week's tutorial being late. I had a last minute VFX project. A uh, buddy of mine in LA called me uh, late Saturday night, needed, uh, needed some compositing help. So I jumped on that. So kind of threw my schedule off at the beginning of the week. And um, I was on a, a, a small shoot yesterday. So it's, it's been a, a crazy week, but um, I appreciate your patience. And I hope you guys found this one helpful. If you like this tutorial, make sure you like. Uh, if you love the tutorial, make sure you subscribe. Uh, in any case, like it, love it, hate it, whatever. Leave me a comment. Um, let me know what I could be doing better. And don't forget my Patreon is live. Uh, I'll throw the URL up here. It'll also be down in the, um, the show description. Thanks so much to all of my patrons. Uh, we've got a, a new patron that joined us this week. So thanks very much for, uh, for joining and supporting. Really, really appreciate it. I will be back uh, early next week with another tutorial. If you guys have suggestions, please let me know. And uh, until then, keep making cool shit and keep being nice to each other. I'll see you guys next week.